Now, I know that y'all know that in no way in hell was I finished with these seafood vids. But did y'all know that I knew that you knew what I know what you knew? Nah, I'm just playing. I did that shit already. The point of this vid is for us to do our best version of that Nickelodeon show, figure it the fuck out. And in this early access demo, we got a little taste of how we're going to conduct our iteration of that Pixar film with the fish. So with that being said, I'm going to call it Finding Steven, the Afro Yonko original. Too childish? Alright, alright. We'll call it the Sifu Connection, which I in no way bit off of Bruce Lee's movie. So why did you kill my teacher then? Why did you kill my teacher? Alright, that might have been a bit of a full swing to the other side with no adolescence. But hey, we're talking about Sifu, so it kind of follows suit. Point is, y'all get what I'm saying. This kung fu detective movie in game form is just beautiful. And ideally, the point of this vid is to talk about the detective board and what we were pretty much able to learn about the story from the trailers that we've gotten and through this demo that we were able to play. Now, before we get into this detective board breakdown, I want to point out some things that we saw in the demo that we definitely should not overlook, if you're interested in the story, that is. The first thing I'm going to point out is that we get choices, which follows suit with the times because a lot of games are starting to give you choices now. And in Seafood, or at least this demo, is that there was three choices in most of these encounters. A passive choice, an aggressive choice, and an information choice. And in this demo, we get to see that almost immediately. Right after we knock this dude out in front of the club, we first walk up to this dude behind the desk. Now in this situation, we only get two choices, which seems to be an information choice and an aggressive choice, but usually the encounter ends the same damn way. God damn it! But regardless of the inevitable end of this encounter, it's dope that we were able to have four situations where we could figure out more about Sean. One of which being this really well done, really well timed clip of Sean sitting there waiting for us to come and whoop his ass. Now another thing that shouldn't be overlooked is the key card that we got after beating one of Sean's disciples. Now remember this key card did give us access to a room in which there were more people to fight, but it wasn't just that, it's that at the end of that room, we got what? You guessed it, another opportunity to find out more information about Sean from this computer guy. What the? What do you want? Are you a friend of Sean's? No. And seeing how he treats others, I don't think he has any. Now, at face value, it seems like this computer guy just basically said, listen, hey, you know hear I me? Mean? Nobody fucks with Sean because he's a dickhead. But a more in-depth look at saying that he really doesn't have any friends could allude to the fact that when we do fight Sean, at least we know he probably won't be sitting there with a bunch of his boys because he don't have any. Or at the very least, there's nobody here trying to protect Sean necessarily or protect any info about him because nobody likes him. But all that aside, going back to the key card that we got off of one of his disciples, it gives us a little more insight or feel on what Soul Clap meant when they said, one run won't be enough to figure out all of the secrets in Sifu. Because remember, we had to get this key card from the disciple after beating him, finish the run we were on, and then play another run to go into that room where we fight more people and then get another opportunity to find out more information about Sean. See what I'm saying? And the point of the run at which we did defeat Sean's disciple, we couldn't backtrack. So you would have had to play another run to get to that room anyway. Now, I don't know if that'll be the case when the full game comes out, but I feel like that will be how this whole thing plays out. And there's another room that we never got access to in the club that you need a code for, and I've played through it a bunch of times, and there's nowhere to find this code, so it's probably not in the demo. But remember, we have to go to certain places to not only find information, but to find new moves to learn. So who knows what's behind that door? I know I want to know. Shit. Now going back to the detective board, we really get to learn a lot of cool dope-ish. We get to learn about some connections, and we get to just learn about some cool info that we about to get into. Now what's dope is, even though we didn't really get to see most of these folks yet, I mean not counting the trailers because we did actually get to see glimpses of these folks in the trailers, but I'm going to digress on that until later, is that... Technically, we know there were five assassins that murked our main character's family, and technically there are five assassins on this board, or at least five people who look like they're probably the five assassins on this board. But between the facts that that would be too easy and the fact that there's purposely placed white space on this board, I don't know, y'all. There's definitely more people to find. At the very least, for symmetry alone, we'll have to get a picture of at least one disciple from each of these assassins that we'll probably have to throw hands with. And if I'm keeping it 100, your boy is still not 100% sure that there isn't one assassin or one person that got all of them together, because as far as I'm concerned, there's some syndicate situation going on here. Now, starting with this probably crazy sister, Kuroki, 
Look at all the info we have on her. Now her past is hard to investigate and there are rumors that she has ties with the underworld. Our info on her also includes that she's going to be running a gallery that's going to be opening soon. To which I'm like, alright, that's cool. We've seen clips of that gallery. But what I really want y'all to look at is the first bit of information where it says that she was fighting alongside Fenji when they were fighting our father. Now right now I know y'all are like, alright, I guess that's significant, but who the hell is Fenji? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now first, if she was fighting our father, it's probably fair to say that she's one of the assassins. Now for the who the hell is Fenji question, well, she's also on a detective board. And in the world of Sifu, she's listed as one of the 10 most powerful women in the world. Or she's listed as all 10 of the most powerful women in the world. That statement's unclear on this magazine, but you know, who knows? I mean, for me, I'm pretty sure there's a Chinese mythology situation going on here, but for now, we're just gonna keep on elaborating on the information that we have on Fenji. Now, it says that she was known for her Wu Guan, which was open to students of all social classes, which is interesting to me because I don't think they mentioned that by accident, and it probably alludes to there being some kind of conflict between social classes, which we always know is a thing. But that aside, I'm sure it plays into the story, which we'll learn more about when the game comes out, but the important part to note is that it shows a little bit of a character trait for her. Like she's progressive, which is dope in anything, but the question still remains, why are you out here killing folks? <laughs> now the second bit of info that we have on Fenji is that we know she's a CEO of a large company that she created a few years prior to the point we are in the story in this demo, which remember is the second half of chapter two. It also mentions that the firm that she's the CEO of is apparently heavily involved in philanthropy and investment, which really should have us scratching our heads because why would somebody who seems to be out here doing so much good be out here catching bodies? Hmm, strange, isn't it? What's also interesting about Fanji is that we found out that she's the one who actually put up the money for Kuroki's gallery. We found that out by zooming in on the museum picture. It, just to refresh y'all memories, if you've seen the clips that Slow Clap has put on Twitter and you've seen the trailers, you'll know that we've gotten a glimpse at this gallery. As a matter of fact, it seemed like it was one of people's favorite environments that they've seen these Slow Clap clips in. Not to mention the glimpses we've seen of Kuroki in some of these trailers. Now to be honest, looking at Kuroki, she got me shooketh. Not even gonna lie. But also, I think it's fair to say that she's probably gonna be the water assassin, because in case y'all forgot, Soul Clap confirmed that each of these assassins are going to be linked to an element, hence the Fire Disciple and the New Wave magazine, which I'm pretty sure will be playing into the different fighting styles, mostly because, you know, I'm an Afro pirate and we're always right. It has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that Soul Clap confirmed that. Point is, I see what y'all are up to, Soul Clap, and it's beautiful. No bow. And speaking of the ways of the optical, do y'all remember in the original trailer where we saw Kirogi for the first time? Y'all remember this little clip? I know y'all do. I know y'all do. Now the real question is, did y'all have a freeze frame here, take a screenshot, enlarge it, rotate it, and then take another screenshot and then put them side by side? No? Well look what you peep when you do. You realize this reflection looks a little off, doesn't it? Doesn't it kind of look like this is a different person entirely? Huh. Interesting. Now I won't lie to y'all, I brought up magic in my other video, you know, but it wasn't me who referred to the ghostly reflection that they showed us in this trailer. That was my boy Bio Studios, or my people's Bio Studios. I'm not sure how many people is over there, but they the ones who put it in the comments, and so I hand y'all the genius tag. Good shit. Point is, that's a fire pickup or catch or whatever you wanna call it, and I'm sure it'll play into the story because this was not done by accident. And the last thing I want to bring up about Kuroki and Fenji, which I think you can actually apply to all the assassins is, you see how we have a picture of each of them on this board, but we also seem to have a picture of where you're going to find them, like Kuroki is in the museum, and that makes me think Fenji is going to be in this tower called the New El Dorado, which I'm not going to lie, it's giving me some Game of Death vibes. Like that. <laughs> Now if we slide over here to the middle of the board, we learn about a dude named Yang. Now the info given on Yang was that he was trained and raised by our main character Sifu and father. Huh, older non-biological brother alert? Y'all feel that too? I know y'all do. Ain't this detective board cool? Hope our main character's journey is true. Do you have what it takes to know kung fu? Because we're probably gonna have to smoke this fool. <laughs> All right, I'm done, nursery rhyming and shit. We also learned that apparently Yang disappeared with his family, wherever they may be, but that the next time our main character saw him was when he was murking the fame. But the most interesting part about this info about Yang is that 
The last sentence says that he doesn't seem that in touch with the world, which at first we're like, I mean, clearly he out here murdering people and not just any people, the people who raised him. But then the sentence before that says he lives above the city and runs a refuge and healing place for the ill, which doesn't seem to track with the whole he's out of touch with the world and people situation. Which makes me be like, yo, what's, what's really going on here for real? Like, if y'all have been watching my Sifu vids for the better part of the last eight months that I've been making them, y'all might remember when I said Pierre Tano and Slowclad made a point to say in what was, I think, the first interview about the game that playing through the story will make you question whether or not the main character is right or wrong on this journey. Now, to me, it's starting to feel like it's going to be a pretty compelling story, and I doubt it's going to be as simple as who's right and who's wrong. But, but for my Afro Pirates, I know some of y'all gangsta, y'all just like, man, they touched my fam, so they gotta go. I understand. Anyways, moving on with Yang. We, now we know he's connected to Sean, who we know is at the club that this whole gameplay and most of the trailers and clips take place. According to our board, our main character and Sean have known each other pretty well for a long time. It's also clarified that he was alongside Yang when they destroyed Sean's father's school and our main character's father's school. Now I'm sure we're all probably a little perplexed as to why Sean would team up with somebody else to destroy his own father's school, but let's not rule out the battle of the generations now. Maybe it's a cultural thing between generations where the younger generation doesn't like the way the older generation was doing shit, but we won't find out when we play the game. Now just jump into the end of the demo real quick. Y'all know this little group here that we end up fighting at the end most of the time? Well, if you don't fight them, which, you know, is kind of hard for us because as soon as we walk in, we think it's kung fu time. But you find out that you don't actually have to fight them. And when you go talk to this guy at the end, he says that there are trials awaiting for you. Again, going back to the options to get a passive choice, an aggressive choice, and an information choice. If you go with the information choice, he tells you that the trials are agility, dexterity, and endurance. And my guess is that we find out more info about Sean in each of these trials. And it seems like the point of these trials is for Sean to figure out who the weak ones are and then get rid of them. Which is why at the end of the demo, I think we see these people training. And apparently these trials are brutal. Not just some little side stuff. I don't know if anybody did this when you walked into this fight club little situation. But I walked over to this dude that's sitting down and he on the phone. And I mean, he talking to some dude about money and all this other stuff. Why the fuck are you only calling me back now? <gasps> what happened? Get all the money to safety. I'll be right there. After the fights. So yeah, I mean, it sounds like he might be moving bricks. Point is, is that it's interesting when you actually try to hear some of these conversations because it might give you some more insight into the story. Now the last person on this detective board is Fajar. Now, if y'all don't remember Fajar, I got you. Now to put this into a few crass words, I hate this dude with a passion. Just because he looks like he's going to be a real problem when we have to fight him. Now the first really interesting piece of information about Fajar is that apparently he had already killed our main character. And these were by orders of Yang. Now I gotta ask, what is up with this dude Yang and why are folks listening to him? Like, you know, he could be the villain that put this all together. I mean, he grew up with the character's fam and our character Sifu, and so he probably knows their strengths and weaknesses and tendencies best. But also, to just be out here bodying a fam he grew up with, like, I mean, some real shit either must have happened or must have been going on because, damn. So I'm gonna just tell y'all about one of the theories I have. So maybe the game starts off with the character being eight years younger, maybe about 12, because it looks like he starts at 20 when the game starts. And he sees these assassins kill his pops and his Sifu, but maybe his pops and his Sifu knew they were going to lose, or just in case, for safety precautions, they give him the pennant, but the assassins didn't know that this pennant was on him. So then Fajar kills him out of the fear that he's either going to want revenge, or maybe they just want to get rid of the whole family line altogether for reasons that we'll probably learn about later. Maybe he wakes up eight years later and after that all these assassins have became seafoods with their own disciples and that's kind of where our gameplay begins. Now of course this theory is a bit half baked and maybe not even baked at all but of course it seems like the pennant only really affects him as far as the years go so you would think that after he got clapped eight years later that's not really how it would work that he would just wake up a few seconds later older because that's what we see in the gameplay but there's a chance that maybe the first time it happens or maybe at a certain age when it happens that you just wake up and it's eight years later and in that time span you know everybody was able to go about their business the thing is when you look at his notes to self he seems like he's genuinely learning his abilities and 
learning what he's capable of and he seems a bit unsure or confused about his abilities now maybe they just did that for our tutorial to help us learn but he seems legitimately perplexed when reading these notes to self it feels like it's not even too far-fetched to think that maybe these pennant is giving him the kung fu abilities that he has to learn how to master through the experience of our journey but anyway the point is i really appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Afro Yanko Detective. All that being said, I'm really just loving how this game is gonna turn out, and the gameplay is already fire. If the story matches it, or is even better, then this is definitely gonna be one of my favorite games, probably all time. And it's really crazy, because I don't think I've ever seen a game where the replayability is built into the game. I mean, you know, regarding the whole runs thing, like I'm gonna have to go through this stage a few times just to gain everything I could use. But anyways, I'm gonna catch y'all on the next vid. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Tell me what y'all think down in the the comments and I'm gonna catch you on the next bit, all right? Peace. I gotta stay as